Playing with Power MTG. Powerful cards, powerful formats. Before we get into today's video, I'd like to talk about our sponsor, Into the AM. Into the AM creates premium, high quality apparel that focuses on self expression and unparalleled comfort. I have tried these shirts myself and they are super comfortable. They have cool shirt designs and they really stand out over so many of my other tees. I really like the way they fit on my body and how soft they feel when I wear them. Into the AM's team of skilled artisans craft each garment from the highest quality fabrics and eco-friendly inks. They support their products with a 30-day money-back guarantee, hassle-free returns, and lightning-fast shipping. They also strive to give back, raising money for scholarships, charities, and support in impactful ways to our communities. Right now, they are running a bundle deal for their graphic tees at $3 for $60, so check out my link in the description below and you'll get an additional 10% off as well. A big thanks for Into the AM for sponsoring today's video. Now, let's start out by showcasing our fighters this evening. First, we have Drake, piloting the partner pair of Rograk, Son of Roga, and Silas Wren, Seeker Adept. This is a turbo ad nauseum deck that seeks to resolve ad nauseas as fast as possible, then assemble either Thassa's Oracle or Breach. Drake's opening hand contains a Mana Vault, Misty Rainforest, Phyrexian Tower, Necropotence, Mystic Remora, Mana Crypt, and his London Mulligan is a Ragavan Nimble Pilfer. Next, we have Zack, piloting Selvala, Heart of the Wilds. This deck seeks to resolve its commander, gain a ton of mana, and then sink it into huge game-winning spells. Zack's opening hand contains a Snow-Covered Forest, Rishkar's Expertise, Castle Garenbrig, Jeweled Lotus, Sylvan Library, Great Oak Guardian, and his London Mulligan is a Dryad Arbor. After that, we have our Mox Pearl patron, Chad, piloting Karya, Caller of the Small. This deck, called Bunny Stacks, seeks to slow down the board, accrue more and more tokens, and win through combat. Chad's opening hand contains the Snow-Covered Plains, Archon of Ameria, Nature's Claim, Clawney Garden, Vanquish the Horde, and his London Mulligans are Autoline Resplendent Cathar and Smuggler Share. Finally, we have our Mox Pearl patron, Jordan, piloting Zexara the Exemplary. This deck seeks to generate infinite mana through its commander and freed from the real, and turn that mana into a win. Jordan's opening hand contains a Jeweled Lotus, Underground River, Windswept Heath, Misty Rainforest, Demonic Tutor, Lay Weaver, and A Veil of Summer. Without further ado, let's kick off this generous, genuine, gentle gesture. Drake had the best Etch-A-Sketch portrait and gets to start us off. Drake draws a card for turn and starts off by casting his commander, Rograk, son of Rogoth. He plays a Phyrexian Tower for turn. He casts a Lotus Petal. He casts a Mana Crypt. He casts a Mana Vault. He activates Phyrexian Tower, sacrificing Rograk, adding two black. He sacks his Lotus Petal to help cast Necropotence. He activates Necropotence 15 times, paying 15 life, exiling 15 cards. He moves to his end step and puts the Necro cards into his hand. He passes, discarding to hand size, exiling the discarded cards. Zack draws a card for turn and plays a Snow-Covered Forest. He casts a Jeweled Lotus. He sacks it to help cast his commander, Savala, Heart of the Wilds. Zack passes. Chad draws and plays a Kalani Garden into play tapped. Garden enters and Chad creates a 0-1 plant. Chad ends his turn. Jordan draws and plays a Windswept Teeth. He casts a Jeweled Lotus. Jordan ships it over to Drake. During his upkeep, Drake wins his Mana Crypt flip. He skips his draw step due to Necropotence. In his main phase, he plays a Polluted Delta. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Volcanic Island onto the battlefield. He recasts his commander, Rograk. He casts Mox Amber. He casts a Mox Opal. He casts Last Chance, getting an extra turn. He casts Arcane Signet. He activates Necropotent 16 times, paying 16 life, exiling 16 cards. He moves to his end step, putting the Necro cards into his hand. He passes, discarding to hand size, exiling the discarded cards. Drake moves to his extra turn. During his upkeep, Drake loses his Mana Crypt flip and takes 3 damage. He skips his draw step due to Necropotence. He plays an Underground Sea for turn. He activates Phyrexian Tower, sacrificing Rograk, adding 2 black. He casts Tainted Pact. Drake exiles, exiles, and exiles until he finally finds Thassa's Oracle, which is only 2 cards from the bottom, putting it into his hand. He casts Thassa's Oracle. In response, Jordan cracks his Windswept Teeth, pays a life, and fetches up a Breeding Pool into play untapped, paying 2 life. He casts Veil of Summer to try and draw a card. In response, Drake casts Swan Song, targeting Veil. Veil is countered, and Jordan creates a 2 2 bird. Oracle resolves, triggers, and with only two cards left in his library, Drake wins the game. Rograk shows once again why it's the fastest deck in the format, so the team decided to go again. In this game, Zack brings back Selvala, Heart of the Wild, and his opening hand contains the Birds of Paradise, Phyrexian Soul Gorger, Shared Summons, Soul's Majesty, Gemstone Caverns, and two Snow Covered Forests. Next, we have Chad, Pounding Falco Spara, Pact Weaver. This deck seeks to create an infinite combo with Falco plus Devoted Druid and Sensei's top, or go for a classic Hermit Druid line. Chad's opening hand contains a Beseju who endures, Esper Sentinel, Swan Song, Gemstone Caverns, Swords to Plowshares, Hallowed Fountain, and his London Mulligan is a Thought Lash. Jordan brings back Zaxara the Exemplary, and his opening hand contains a Freed from the Real, 
Noxious Revival, An Offer You Can't Refuse, Birds of Paradise, Rejuvenating Springs, Tropical Island, and An Elves of Deep Shadow. Drake brings back Rograk and Silas Wren, and his opening hand contains the Gemstone Caverns, Phyrexian Tower, Deadly Rollick, Tainted Pact, Time Twister, Mystical Tutor, and a Lion's Eye Diamond. And Zack gets to start us off. But Chad and Drake have pre-game actions. Chad puts the Gemstone Caverns onto the battlefield, exiling Beseju, who endures. Drake also puts the Gemstone Caverns onto the battlefield, exiling Deadly Rollick. Zack draws and plays a Snow-Covered Forest. He casts a Birds of Paradise and passes the turn. Chad draws and plays a Hallowed Fountain into play untapped, paying two life. He casts an Esper Sentinel. In response, Drake casts a Mystical Tutor. He fetches up a Yawgmoth's Will onto the top of his library. Then Esper Sentinel resolves. Chad passes. Jordan draws, plays a Rejuvenating Springs, and passes. At the end of Jordan's turn, Chad pays two life to cast Noxious Revival, putting Drake's Mystical Tutor onto the top of his library, completely wrecking Drake's tempo. The turn moves to Drake. Drake draws and plays a Phyrexian Tower. He casts his commander, Rograk, son of Rogon. He casts a Lion's Eye Diamond. Esper Sentinel triggers and Chad draws. Drake activates Phyrexian Tower, sacrificing Rograk, adding two black. He casts Time Twister. In response, Jordan casts an offer you can't refuse. Esper Sentinel triggers and Chad draws. In response, really wanting the wheel to resolve, Chad casts Swan Song, targeting Jordan's offer. In response, Drake sacrifices his Lion's Eye Diamond, discards his hand, adding three black. Then Swan Song counters offer and Jordan creates a 2-2 bird. Then Time Twister resolves and everyone shuffles their hand and graveyard into their library and draws seven. Next, Drake casts Spring Leaf Drum. He exiles Simeon Spirit Guide from his hand, adding a red. He casts Wheel of Misfortune. The table begins to talk about how they need to pick large numbers in order to make sure that Drake cannot wheel. Drake stops him in their tracks, telling them that that's not going to work as he is going to be donking himself for a huge amount. Then Wheel resolves, Drake picks 17, Zack picks 12, Chad picks 6, and Jordan picks 0. Drake loses 17 life and then everyone but Jordan discards their hands and draws 7. With nothing else to do, Drake passes the turn. Zack draws and plays a snow-covered forest. He casts Wild Growth. Esper triggers and Chad draws. Zack casts Jeweled Lotus. He cracks his Lotus to cast his commander, Savala, Heart of the Wilds. He casts Relic Golem. It enters, Savala triggers, and Zack draws. Zack ends his turn. Chad draws and plays a Misty Rainforest. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a tropical island onto the battlefield. He casts a Mana Crypt. He casts Rashmi, Eternity's Crafter. Somewhere in the universe, Cal smiles as Chad moves to combat. He attacks Drake with Esper Sentinel. Drake takes it, and Chad ships the turn. Jordan draws and moves to combat. He attacks Drake with his bird. Drake takes it, and in his second main phase, Jordan plays an Ottawara Soaring City as his land for turn. Jordan passes. Drake draws and casts Chrome Box. Esper triggers and, in response, Chad pays two life to cast Noxious Revival, targeting Swords to Plowshares in his graveyard. Rashmi triggers and Chad reveals a Tundra into his hand. Then Noxious resolves, putting Swords on top of his library. Then Esper's trigger resolves and Chad draws. Then Chrome Mox resolves and Drake imprints Days. Next, Drake plays an Ottawara Soaring City as his land for turn. He casts his commander, Rograx, son of Rogoth. He casts Wishclaw Talisman. Drake ends his turn. During Zack's upkeep, Chad casts Swords to Plowshares, targeting Selvala. Rashmi triggers and Chad reveals a Malevolent Herman into his hand. In response, Zack activates Selvala, adding six green. He casts Shared Summons. Esper triggers and Zack pays. In response, Jordan casts Dispel, targeting summons. Esper triggers and Chad draws. With no other answers, Dispel counters Shared Summons, Swords exiles Savala, and then Zack gains two life. Zack draws and plays a Nykthos, Shrine to Nyx. Zack gives the turn to Chad. During his upkeep, Chad wins his Mana Crypt roll. He draws and plays a Tundra. He casts Reclamation Sage. Rashmi triggers and Chad reveals a Mystic Remora, casting it. In response, Jordan casts Swansong. Esper triggers and Chad draws. Remora is countered and Chad creates a 2-2 bird. Then Reclamation enters and destroys Drake's Wishclaw Talisman. Chad casts Sylvan Library and passes the turn. Jordan draws and plays a Beseju who endures as his land for turn. Jordan passes. Drake draws and starts off by casting Ride of Flame. Esper triggers and Chad draws. Then Drake adds two red. He activates Phyrexian Tower, sacrificing Rograk, adding two black, putting Rograk into his graveyard. He casts Tainted Pack. In response, Chad casts Force of Vigor for its alternate cost, exiling a green card, targeting both Relic Golem and Springleaf Drum. Rashmi triggers and Chad reveals a Spell Seeker, casting it. It enters, and then Chad fetches up a mental misstep into his hand. Then Force resolves, destroying both artifacts. With Tainted Pack still on the stack, Chad casts Silence, locking out his opponents this turn. Then Tainted Pack resolves. Drake exiles from the top of his library, including Thassa's Oracle, until he finds Gamble, putting it into his hand. He plays a Scalding Tarn for turn. Unfortunately locked out, Drake ends his turn. Zack draws and plays a Snow-Covered Forest. He recasts his commander, Savala, Heart of the Wild. Zack passes. At the end of Zack's turn, Drake cracks his Scalding Tarn, pays a life, and fetches up a Badlands onto the battlefield. During his upkeep, Chad wins his Mana Crypt roll. 
Also during his upkeep, Zack casts Force of Vigor for its alternate cost, exiling Survival of the Fittest, targeting Chad's Sylvan Library and Esper Sentinel. Esper triggers and Zack pays. Then Force resolves, destroying both. Chad draws and plays a Windswept Teeth. He casts Counterbalance. Rashmi triggers and, in response, Chad cracks his Windswept Teeth, pays a life, and fetches up a Savannah onto the battlefield. Then Rashmi's trigger resolves and Chad reveals a Ponder, casting it. He looks at the top three, rearranges, and draws. With Counterbalance still in the stack, Drake casts Swan Song. In response, Chad hard casts Mental Misstep, countering Swan Song. Then Counterbalance resolves. Chad moves to combat and attacks Zack with his bird, Drake with Reclamation Sage, and Jordan with Rashmi. They all take it, and Chad ships the turn to Jordan. Jordan draws and plays an Underground River. He casts a Talisman of Curiosity. He casts a Jewel Lotus. Counterbalance triggers and, in response, Chad casts Path to Exile targeting Zack Salvala. Rashmi triggers and Chad reveals an Endurance into his hand. Then Path resolves, Salvala is exiled, and Zack fetches up a snow-covered forest onto the battlefield tapped. Then Counterbalance's trigger resolves, and Chad reveals a Marsh Flats, countering Jeweled Lotus. All through, Jordan passes. Drake draws and casts Harnfell, Horn of Bounty. He passes. Zack draws and casts Quirion Ranger. He plays a Yavamaya, Cradle of Growth, as his land for turn. He casts Natural Order, sacrificing Birds of Paradise as an additional cost. In response, Chad casts Whirlwind Denial. Rashmi triggers, and Chad reveals a Marsh Flats into his hand. Then Denial counters Natural Order. With nothing else, Zack passes to Chad. During his upkeep, Chad wins his Mana Crypt roll. He draws and plays a Marsh Flats. He cracks it and pays a life. In response, Jordan taps his Underground River to flash in an Opposition Agent. Counterbalance triggers, and Chad reveals an Elish Norn Grand Cenobite. Then Opposition Agent resolves. With Marsh Flats ability still on the stack, Chad channels Ottawara, Soaring City, bouncing Opposition Agent back to Jordan's hand. Then Chad fetches up a breeding pool into play untapped, paying two life. Which shouldn't be possible with Marsh Flats, but the table missed it, and life goes on. He casts his commander, Falco Spara, Pact Weaver. Rashmi triggers, and Chad reveals a Glenalindra Archmage into his hand. Then Falco enters with a shield counter. Chad gives the turn to Jordan. Jordan draws and casts Ledger Shredder. Counterbalance triggers, and Chad reveals a Neoform, countering Shredder. Next, Jordan taps his Underground River to cast Opposition Agent. Jordan passes the turn. Drake draws and starts off his turn by activating Harnfell, discarding Gamble, exiling Ancient Tomb, and Talisman of Creativity. He activates Harnfell, discarding Burning Catacombs, exiling Mox Amber, and Moonsnare Prototype. He activates Harnfell, discarding Imperial Seal, exiling Soul Ring and Necropotence. He casts Mox Amber from Exile. He casts Moonsnare Prototype from Exile. He plays an Ancient Tomb from Exile as his land for turn. He casts Soul Ring from Exile. He casts his other commander, which everyone forgot he had, Silas Wren, Seeker Adept. He activates Phyrexian Tower, sacrificing Silas, adding two black. This gives him enough black to cast Necropotence from Exile. In response, Chad casts Fierce Guardianship for its alternate cost. Rashmi triggers, and Chad reveals a Neoform into his hand. Then Fierce counters Necro. Next, Drake taps his Ancient Tomb to cast Talisman of Curiosity from Exile. Finished up, Drake sends the turn to Zack. Zack draws and casts Carpet of Flowers. He moves to his second main phase and adds four green through his carpet. He recasts his commander, Salvala, Heart of the Wilds. Counterbalance triggers, and Chad reveals a Force of Negation, countering Salvala. Zack sighs and passes to Chad. During his upkeep, Chad loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes three damage. He draws and casts Glenolindra, Archmage. Rajmi triggers, and Chad reveals a Mana Gorger Hydra, casting it. He moves to combat and attacks Jordan with Falco Spara. Jordan takes it, and Chad passes the turn. Jordan draws and taps his Underground River to cast its commander, Zaxara the Exemplary. Mana Gorger Hydra triggers and gets a plus one plus one counter. Jordan passes. Drake draws and casts Dress Down. Mana Gorger Hydra triggers and gets a plus one plus one counter. In response, Chad sacrifices Glenolindra, targeting Dress Down. Glenolindra triggers and Chad returns it to the battlefield with a minus one minus one counter. Then Dress Down is countered. Next, Drake casts his commander, Silas Wren. Mana Gorger Hydra triggers and gets a plus one plus one counter. Drake passes the turn to Zack. Zack draws and in his first main phase, he has four green through his carpet. He casts, to the surprise of no one, his commander, Savala, Heart of the Wilds. Mana Gorger triggers and gets a counter. Counterbalance triggers and, in response, Chad looks at the top card of his library through Falco Spara. He casts Turn the Earth from the top of his library through Falco Spara, removing a minus one minus one counter from Glenolendra. Rashmi and Mana Gorger trigger. Mana Gorger gets a counter, and then Chad reveals a Bountiful Promenade into his hand through Rashmi. Then Turn the Earth resolves, Chad shuffles Path to Exile, Swords to Plowshares, and Cyclonic Rift from his graveyard into his library and gains two life. He then chooses not to reveal through Counterbalance, and Selvala finally resolves. Next, Zack activates Quirion Ranger, bouncing one of his tapped forests, targeting Selvala even though it's untapped. He plays his freshly bounced snow-covered forest for turn. He casts Sylvan Library. Mana Gorger gets a counter, and then Counterbalance triggers. Chad reveals a Hermit Druid, countering Sylvan Library. With nothing else, Zack passes to Chad. During his upkeep, Chad wins his Mana Crypt roll. He draws and pays two life to cast Jataxian Pro from the top of his library through Falco, removing a counter from Mana Gorger Hydra, targeting Jordan. Hydra triggers and gets a counter. He looks at Jordan's hand and draws a card. 
He casts Hermit Druid and Hydra gets a counter again. He plays a Bountiful Promenade for turn. Chad sends the turn to Jordan. Jordan draws and casts Finale of Devastation where X equals 2. Zaxar and Mana Gorge are trigger. Mana Gorge or Hydra gets a counter and then Jordan creates a Hydra token. In response to Finale, Chad activates Glenelendra, sacking it, countering Finale. Glenelendra triggers and returns it to the battlefield with a minus one minus one counter. Next, Jordan casts Pemmen's Aura, targeting Zexar. This is game over for the table, so everyone looks to Chad for an answer. Hydra triggers and gets a counter. Chad looks at the top card of his library through Falco. Then Chad responds by casting Nature's Claim through Falco, removing a counter from Glenelendra, targeting Drake's Harnfell Horn of Bounty. Then Harnfell is destroyed and Drake gains four life. With Aura still on the stack, Chad activates Glenelendra, sacking it, countering Pemmen's Aura. Then Glenelendra triggers and returns to the battlefield with a minus one minus one counter. With nothing else, Jordan passes to Drake. Drake draws and moves to combat. He attacks Zack with Silas Wren. Zack takes it, and in his second main phase, Drake casts Wishclaw Talisman from his graveyard through Silas. Counterbalance triggers, and Chad reveals an Eladomri's Call, countering Wishclaw. Drake ships it over to Zack. Zack draws, takes no actions, and passes. During his upkeep, Chad loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes 3 damage. He draws and activates Hermit Druid. He mills his entire library since he has no basic lands. He flashes back Turn the Earth, shuffling Thassa's Oracle into his library. He casts Thassa's Oracle through Falco, removing a counter from Glenelendra. Oracle enters, and Chad wins the game. Ladies and gentlemen, what a fun set of games tonight. Congrats to Drake and Chad on their wins. In Game 1, Drake had an explosive start right out of the gate and was able to win before anyone could set up. The entire deck is built to go as fast as possible and this game showed that off in proper fashion tonight. In Game 2, Chad was able to completely lock down the table with his synergies from Falco. It wasn't just good top decks. His perfect timing and selection of his removal enabled him to swing the game into his favor while his engines kept grinding advantage over and over. It just goes to show you how a skilled pilot can pull out amazing wins with decks like Falco. Well, that about wraps it up for this episode. Tune in next time and we duke it out to see who will be king of the competitive EDH table. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time.